Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan um, coming to you to talk about today's uh, EPL main slate. It's actually a quite a uh, nice, sizable slate. Um, it's a four game slate, and there's no Man City, there's no Arsenal, there's no Liverpool, there's no Chelsea. Um, so I think it's a very, very nice uh, slate for us to dive into. Um, you know, we typically like these uh, not so chalky slates because it kind of allows us to you know trust our gut on um, some of the teams that we you know that I like and you know sometimes that pays off um, gives us more edge compared to the chalk playing the chalky stacks of Liverpool or Man City right so yeah so let's dive in uh, without wasting any more time um, the biggest favorite on the slate is Aston Villa at home at minus 250 um, and then Norwich City is a huge underdog at plus 800. Norwich City is at the bottom of the standings for EPL um, so far. Um, they had shown some improvements here and there, but Aston Villa should be able to win this game easily, in my opinion, as well. So I think that's going to be the chalkiest stack, in my opinion, on the slate. But I'll kind of dive into the actual starting lineup, projected starting lineup, and uh, give you some thoughts on, you know, who, who my favorite core plays would be, and then GPP plays would be. And then Southampton versus Crystal Palace is an interesting matchup for DFS uh, upside. Um, uh, Southampton is the slight favorite at plus 138, um, but I do think Crystal Palace has a very good shot at upsetting Southampton here. Um, but I do like this, uh, you know, the goal upside in this matchup. And then same, same for the Watford Burnley matchup that's on the next uh, next on the slate. Um, it's a toss up matchup. So these are basically two toss up matchups in my opinion. Um, but Watford, in my opinion, um, has been playing a little bit better. And then Burnley has 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 been as well with McNeil back. Um, so I'll dive into that. And then Wolverhampton and Brighton. Um, I do. So this is a toss up matchup as well. But this is gonna be gonna be more of a defensive matchup so this is my least favorite uh, matchup to target on the slate today so I'm gonna be targeting probably these first three on the on the on the list and then Wolverhampton and Brighton I don't know if that's gonna be <clears throat> it doesn't it does it does not have the same type of goal upside compared to the other three games in my opinion so yeah let's dive into the projected starting lineup on sofa score that that's the one I use typically um, Aston Villa, it all starts with Philip Coutinho. I think he's going to be the highest owned guy <clears throat> on the slate. But aside from him, it's really anything else is GPP, in my opinion. Um, I know Ashley Young and Matty Cash, their fullbacks, um, have they will probably have the liberty to go up and down today against Norwich, who's been really leaky on defense. Um, but even before their fullbacks, I think I'm going to have to target some of the strikers here. I don't usually target strikers, but against Norwich City, um, who has a le leaky defense, like I said, um, I'm going to have to see what Aston Villa, um, let's see how, how, how they've done in terms of goal scoring. They've actually been that pretty poor, um, but the Norwich has been giving up a lot. Three goals, three goals. Yeah, so... Hmm. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. So if I, if in an optimal cash lineup, I'll probably target Coutinho and then maybe either Watkins or wing Ings. Ings would most likely take penalty kicks. Uh, actually here Watkins take, took a penalty kick. Did he play against Wolverhampton now? So if Ings starts, he will take penalty kicks most likely. Um, but Watkins actually has been playing pretty well. So there's a good chance Watkins starts and Ings does not start, um, vice versa. Um, so we'll just have to keep out, uh, keep our eyes out um, on that. But in terms of the midfielders, I mean, my favorite would be McGinn, obviously, um, because he is he gets more involved on the offensive side. Doug Louise and Jacob Ramsey. I mean, Jacob Ramsey likes to go up and down as well, but Doug Louise is more of a central defensive midfielder. So I would have to target, like I said, Coutinho and then Watkins or Ings or both if you think they're going to score three or four. I don't think they will. So I'm just going to have a share of one of the strikers and then maybe McGinn and then one of the fullbacks. 
So that's probably in an optimal setting. And then if you think Norwich somehow can pull this off, I don't think they can. Um, but if you think they'll score a goal or two, I mean, Puki is obviously going to be the on the end of it, I think. Um, on one of those, I think, if they score multiple goals, um, he's the engine and Rashika. They're both uh, good for that team, but that's really about it that I'm interested in for that uh, underdog. Southampton against Crystal Palace. Um, it's an interesting matchup because Crystal Palace has, has been playing a little bit better and the same as for Southampton. They're in the middle of the pack in the standings. They're not going to go anywhere. They're not getting relegated like these teams at the bottom, but they're not also going up all the way there. So these games are kind of meaningless to them, in my opinion, um, other than just pride um, for these players. And as you can see, they've all, they've both been in bad form. Um, and it looks like Southampton has been in pretty bad form on defense, pretty leaky. And Crystal Palace has not been, been able to score goals. Um, but they ha also haven't been giving up a lot of goals. Okay, so this is <clears throat> how I put it: Southampton, bad defense, give up a lot of gives up a lot of goals, but has been struggling to score goals. Crystal Palace has been struggling to uh to score, but has not been giving up goals. So. Could end 0-0, zero, zero, could end 1-1. One, one. Uh, maybe this is not as lucr lucrative in terms of goal upside that I, you know, as I initially thought. Um, so maybe it's going to be a more defensive matchup. But if I were to start with Southampton, it all starts with James Ward-Prowse. Um, I think in a cash lineup, he is a must-have, in my opinion, on this kind of a slate without any you know, heavy favorites like Man City. I think Coutinho for Aston Villa and then James Ward-Prowse or have probably will have the highest ownership today. Um, maybe playing both or one of them for sure. Um, but aside from him, the, for GPP, it really goes anywhere. <laughs> Stuart Armstrong, Adams or Adam Armstrong. And then Tella, I like, people like to play him, but I'm not a huge fan of Tella. So, and then the fullbacks, I'm, they don't like to cross the ball that much. So I'm not that interested. And then, but if you, if it, if it means, you know, saving salary to play up, um, to play up to uh, James Ward-Prowse and Coutinho, yeah, feel free. And then some maybe other Aston Villa guys, since they're the huge favorite, um, that, that could mean you having to play one of the low price fullbacks, like in this game, Parade or Walker KWP. And then on the Crystal Palace side, yeah, I mean, all stars with Zaha. And then Gallagher has not been, you know, playing as well as he did early in the season. So I think he's kind of like packing it for the season, in my opinion, um, when he's on the pitch. So I would have to start with Zaha, who is more di who's been more dynamic the last month or so. Um, and then Eze, if he starts, yeah, I mean, Zaha and Eze and then Gallagher are probably the ones that I'm interested in. And then Olise, he's an interesting piece, in my opinion. He has such a high upside. So if he does end up starting, um, I'm definitely going to have him in one of, you know, some of my lineups. And then the fullbacks, yeah, Klein and Ward, like I said, same as Parade and KWP, whereas if you think, you know, you can, you need to save some salary somewhere, I think those would not be the worst pieces to target on defense. Two more matchups on the slate. Uh, Watford versus Burnley. Um, Watford is a slight favorite um, against Burnley at home. Um, Watford is kind of hard to target, in my opinion. Um, the the point distribution is pretty spread it out. Um, but it, if I had to pick, I mean, it has to start with Esmaili Sar, and then Lauza. And then Dennis, I know cleverly most likely will take some set pieces, but they don't get that many set pieces. And then also Kamara and Gakia, if he ends up starting, I'm, I'm actually interested in their fullbacks um, here. Burnley likes to give up a lot of crosses. So I'm actually, I don't actually don't mind Gakia or Kamara, their, their fullbacks for Watford here today. And then Burnley. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think this is going to be a more open matchup <coughs> compared to Southampton game. So let's look at, Oh, wow. wow. They have to win um, both teams. 
yeah, this is going to be an exciting, exciting matchup because, like, let's say if Burnley loses today and then Everton wins, Everton can climb out of, boy, they're even a game behind. So Burnley has to win this game. And then Watford really has to start winning. So Burnley is going to on the road. So they're going to try really hard. So Burnley actually would be interesting. They, they've been playing much better. Watford has been giving up a lot of goals, two plus at least the last four games. Um, yeah, I'm I'm actually interested in Burnley today. Okay, so yeah, let's start Burnley here. Um, so maybe Burnley and Aston Villa would be an interesting pick, I think. Um, McNeil, um, it all starts with McNeil, and then Josh Brownhill. And then maybe Jade Rodriguez and like one of these three guys, Wakehorse, Vidra, and Rodriguez, they're all strikers. So really, if you want to, you know, play one of those, that'd be great. And then the fullbacks I'm interested in today. Yeah, uh, Roberts or Taylor. So yeah, I'm interested in Burnley um, a lot today, um, just given the scenarios. And then Southampton and Crystal Palace, looking at their head-to-head, their recent history, matches history. Um, it's not looking that great um, in terms of the goal upside as I initially thought. So I think Burnley will be an interesting piece, I think. Or just to, this game to target. I think it's going to be an open matchup. Now, last matchup on the slate is Wolves versus BHA. Like I said, it's going to be more of a defensive matchup in my opinion. Um, but Wolves is like a slight favorite and they're in the eighth place where they're looking to win to kind of target the Champions League or Europa League um, spot. And Brighton is in the middle of the pack, whereas if they win 35 games, yeah, they're not really going to go anywhere. So, um, so yeah, I do think Wolves probably has more motivation to play here. Um, but I do think they're more of a defensive team compared to BHA. And BHA is a very, very solid defensively as well. Um, so that's why I'm thinking it's going to be more defensive and not uh, DFS point friendly. But for the Wolves, yeah, it all starts with if NATO starts, that's going to be an interesting uh, dynamic here because he used to be a really, really good player for the Wolves until his injury came about. And then this year he's coming back. He came back from, you know, his injuries uh, about a month ago, and he's been starting to get some more minutes um, under his belt. And there's a good chance that he might start here again um, and play, you know, 70, 80 minutes, in my opinion. If he does, I mean, I think he's going to be a good good play um, for cash or GPP because um, he has the upside to be able to, you know, break the slate. And then um, Johnny and the Semedo, their fullbacks, that's probably where I'll go for the Wolves. And then Moutinho takes some set pieces. But if Nato starts, that's going to take it away from Moutinho. So um, that's going to be an interesting dynamic. And then, yeah, if you think they'll score, Jimenez is not a bad start. And then BHA, it all starts with McAllister's. Uh, McAllister, not McAllister's, like a deli. McAllister and Trissard, um, those two are the, you know, ways to go, And I think. And then Cucurella, and then maybe Beltman depends on where he starts. If he starts out like this, where on the outside, where he's willing to go up and down, um, he is more viable for DFS purposes. But if he's in the back three, where he's more, playing more of a central, uh, you know, defender role, um, then he's not going to have much liberty to go up and down and cross the ball as much. So, but then Cucurella likes to go up and down either way, wherever he is on the field. Um, so I like him, Trissar, McAllister, and then Cucurella. So like I said, it's going to be more of a defensive matchup. So maybe I'll target like one of their goalies. Um, so I don't think um, that's going to be, I think for, for the goalkeeper position, you can really play anybody as long as it does not negatively correlate uh, with your with the rest of your lineup. So if you have a lot of Aston Villa guys, right, who you think will score, you don't want to have Tim Krul. Um, unless you're kind of fading the high owner, high, highly owned Aston Villa pieces and then playing like Burnley pieces with somebody else. Yeah, I mean, you could definitely play Tim Krul. So as long as, you know, just make sure that your goalkeeper choice does not negatively correlate um, with the rest of your lineup. But yeah, so that's all I got for you guys today. Um, if you guys have any questions or if you want to chat, uh, 
the starters when the starters come out, which come out um, one hour before the kickoff. So it'll be 9 a.m. Eastern time. But if you, uh, yeah, I hope you liked the video. If you liked the video, please uh, hit the like button. And then if you want to subscribe to our channel, you'll be able to uh, get notifications on these soccer videos or League of Legends videos that I do that, are, that will be very, uh, you know, coming up um, very soon. And then, yeah, we also do uh, sports about other videos, including MLB and NBA, all the major sports that you name it. Um, so yeah, if you're interested, let me know or hit the subscribe button. And then yeah, please hit the like button and that would that mean a lot to us and I would really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Good luck, everybody.